Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to this Holy Mass of the Beheading of St. Baptist. In this Mass, I will offer prayers for all of you, especially those who may be suffering in some way at this time. Pray and ask the intercession of St. John the Baptist to be with you. And to pray for the sick, pray for the persecuted, pray for the oppressed. Pray for all those who are grieving today because someone dear to their hearts has just passed. Pray and ask for God's comforting. And I bring all your intentions and every other concern you have to God today on this altar. Our opening hymn is Companions on the Journey. We are companions on the journey, breaking bread and sharing life. And in the love of the hope is a hope we share, for we believe in the love of our God. We believe in the love of our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, we gather here to celebrate God's love. It's been um, about a week now since we last gathered like this, in this platform. I pray that God may be with you and that God has been with you and he will continue to show himself and to manifest himself in, in more um, vivid ways to you. This Mass is going to be offered for you and for your intentions. Let us now confess our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only the God and Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who willed that St. John the Baptist should go ahead of your son, both in birth and in death, grant that as he died a martyr for truth and justice, we too might fight hard for the confession of what you teach. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me thus, Guard your loins, stand up, and tell all that I command you. Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I, this day, who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against his priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, I will sing your salvation. I will sing your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. 
in your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I will sing your salvation. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O God, my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will sing your salvation. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb, you are my strength. I will sing your salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing your salvation. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia. My sister and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Herod was the one who had John the Baptist arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married. John had said to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but was unable to do so. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, and kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. She had an opportunity one day when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers, his military officers, and the leading men of Galilee. Herodias' own daughter came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and his guests. The king said to the girl, Ask of me whatever you wish and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her. I will grant you Whatever you ask of me, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptist. The girl hurried back to the king's presence and made her request. I want you to give me at once, on a platter, the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed, but because of his oath and the guest, he did not wish to break her, his word to her. So he promptly dispatched an executioner with orders to bring back his head. The girl, in turn, gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about this, they came and took his body and laid it in the tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, um, it's been long since we had the opportunity to celebrate like this. I have been um, caught up in transition because I am moving, or I have moved from my former duty station to a new one. Now I am in Fort Drum, New York. So it was impossible for me to get settled enough to stream um, live masses but i'm happy to to be back and share god's blessings and god's love with you i'd like to reflect on the word passion because today that's what we celebrate the passion in some other some other the text say the, the beheading of john the baptist but i like to go with the word the passion of John the Baptist. Now the word passion has different meanings. The dictionary meaning talks about very strong or uncontrollable, uncontrollable emotions, a strong sense 
of one's emotion. It doesn't matter the nature of those emotions. That is so strong and uncontrollable. And the other sign speaks to the suffering of Jesus Christ, the passion, the suffering, the, 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 the betrayal, the arrest, you know, the crucifixion, and everything uh, along with it. And so I'm going to reflect on this gospel in those two senses. First, I'd like to pick the life of John the Baptist, and I want to use the first sense of the word passion. John the Baptist was a very passionate preacher and a very passionate holy man. You hear it here um, on this account. He said, whenever he spoke, he was so passionate and he was so compelling that Herod, even though disliked John and was perplexed by him, liked listening to him. So John was compelling and was convincing because he gave everything he had to his message. He was passionate about his witnessing. He was passionate about what he did. Now, whether you are a politician, a doctor, anything that you are, if you cannot convince people that you enjoy what you do, that you like what you do, you're more likely not going to succeed in what you do. So some level of passion is important in everything you do, whether it's in your married life, or it's in your business, it's in your academics, whatever it is that you do, unless you bring some passion into it, you're less likely going to succeed. So that, that level of commitment and intensity, it's important. If you play soccer or play football, American football, or play basketball, whatever you do, or even a movie producer, without passion, it's impossible to make it. If you are a restaurant um, owner, all right, and you don't bring passion and, and, and zest into all of that, that there is there's little chance that you will succeed. So passion in this sense is what we see here with John the Baptist. But this level of passion can also take us to do bad things or do good things. In the case of John, it, it, it propelled him to speak God's truth with, con with conviction and, and with compelling witnessing. We also see that that brought him passion in the other sense, which is suffering and death. Betrayal, suffering and death. John died doing what he believed in, passionately witnessing to God's truth and to God's justice. And he died as a result. So, so in John we see um, how passion, the first sense of passion, which is a very strong, intense emotion will force him, will push him to do the right thing. And then we see the consequences of his suffering, his arrest, his imprisonment, his suffering, and ultimately his death. We also see passion in Herodias. Herodias is passionately upset. Now, it's important to understand that Herodias was Philip's wife. Philip is a brother of Herod. And it's believed that she was a very beautiful woman. So Herod killed his brother and married her. And so John told him that that wasn't, wasn't right. You cannot kill your brother and marry his widow. And that's where all of this started. So his wife Herodias John, uh, sorry, um, Herod's wife, Herodias, had this passionate anger and hate because John had exposed them and had called attention to this un unholy union. And that, that intense emotion of anger and hate and vengefulness was what obsessed Herodias and scripture said she would have liked to kill him but was unable to until an opportunity came. I'd like you to focus on that word, an opportunity came. So when that opportunity came, she decided to push through with her passionate, her passionate anger and, and, and hate of John the Baptist. Her poor little daughter comes with a request, Mom, what shall I ask? 
and of all things on earth that you would tell your 14 year old daughter she decided to get her daughter because of her own um, passionate anger she decided to get her daughter involved in bloodshed she said go ask for the dead for the head of John the Baptist so this is what passion can also let you do that's why we must learn to use our passions right because our passions are so strong and in some cases uncontrollable that if not put to the right use they can force us to do very hateful things in some cases very racist, racist things or very sexist things you can you can recall any occasions where people have passionately committed grave crimes because of their passions and so it's up to you it's up to me to learn to use the passions that god gave us for good and so the consequences of herodias using her passions wrongly was that a man dies a man dies innocently for doing nothing but for speaking god's truth herodias was suffering she was suffering from from guilt she was suffering from guilt that haunted her and she wanted to deal with this guilt but she wanted to deal with it the wrong way to take away in her mind to take away the source of the guilt the guilt wasn't because she's done something wrong the guilt was because someone was pointing out what she's done wrong and so i can only imagine how much she suffered every night and day waiting for an opportunity to take that source out which case was john the baptist i want to say this to you you and i would have the opportunity to experience both sides of passion we will see suffering in so many ways we will see suffering whether in our poverty our hunger whether in our emotional aloneness we will see suffering whether it is in physical distancing whatever it is that you suffer as a result of this virus that is real it has consequences but it's up to you to choose what you want to do with it some may begin to drink excessively others may become very hostile and readily very irritable now that's that's your choice to do that but you could also choose to use this as an opportunity to want to do good like investing in making sure people that you know seniors will live alone that you from time to time you call and check on them even if you can't be with them physically there's a lot you can do or like even doing more reading and just investing in your intellect but it's up to you as i said you could even choose to pray read the bible listen to the bible listen to other you know um, holy inspirational talks that can inspire and give you hope but there are some who might choose to do it differently and believe it or not life is going to give us several opportunities to use our passions and to use it the experience of our pain and our suffering Herodias chose to use hearts to take the head of a man for nothing I don't know how you're going to use yours but I hope you choose to stay close to God and choose to seek God's guidance on how to take the opportunities life is going to give to you life will give you a lot of opportunities in this life don't take the opportunity to do evil, to do wrong. Take it to do good. Look around today. There are opportunities out there and I hope we can all recognize them and take them and change the world because there is a lot of suffering and pain. There is a lot of suffering and grief. There is a lot of fear around the world today. You could choose this, to take this opportunity to do good and to do great things.
All is in your power. All is in your hands. All is in the decisions you choose to make today. And believe it, when you choose to use these two senses of passion, the soft the experience of your suffering and the intense emotions you feel, and use them right and put them to good and to good effect. You can only imagine how the resources of life will be open to you and how God's blessings will just be lavishly blessed and be given to you. As always, my dear friends, I'd like to remind you that you are the delight of Almighty God and that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. John the Baptist was called from the first moment of his life to announce the coming of the light to the nations. He was first in birth and was also first in death. In the joys of this feast, let us make our prayers to God and ask for grace to bear our pain and our suffering and to use our emotions well. That the church may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the message of salvation to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of nations may be the instrument of truth and justice to fight off oppression, to end injustices, and to work for a fair, hospitable, and more just world and lead their people in the way of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the poor and suffering, that the disinherited and disenfranchised, that the oppressed and those without voice may take fresh hope in the promise of Christ's victory and glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may come to that end to which our faith looks, the salvation of our souls. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have birthdays or anniversaries today, and for those who have asked our prayers, and those who may be traveling about this time, that God may keep them safe. We pray for those who are struggling in other ways, especially as a result of this virus, that the grace of God may be granted to them to meet their every need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those we have lost, especially those we were unable to be there and offer them our final goodbyes, that God may bring them to a place of rest and peace until we meet again, that God may comfort the hearts and minds of those who grieve. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the tensions, the racial tensions, and the battles between the black people, and in some cases our law enforcement, that God may help us understand that we can both support our police and still request for justice for black America and help us to work for what is right, recognizing the humanity of every person. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Father of time and eternity, you search our hearts and discern our needs before we ask. Aided by the prayers of Saint John the Baptist, in your mercy, please hear and grant our prayers, for we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed I know God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I know God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Through these offerings which we bring to you, O Lord, grant that we make straight your paths, as taught by the voice crying in the desert, John the Baptist, who powerfully sealed his teaching by the shedding of his blood. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In this precursor, John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing. Even in the womb, he left for joy at the coming of the human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the lamp of redemption and to make holy the flowing waters he baptized the very altar of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chance, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
Let us pray using the words our God gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. My dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. From me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. God bless you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Grace now for Holy Communion. Most passionate, most merciful, ever loving God. Today there are still some of your children who are unable to attend Mass and to receive this sacrament physically. They seek the grace that comes from this sacrament to God. From this altar, to their homes, to their hearts, to their spirits and souls, O God, we ask your nourishment, that you may nourish them, that you may bless them, that you may so fill them with every good grace, for every good deed. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Grant to Lord that as we celebrate the heavenly birth of St. John the Baptist, that we may revere for what it signifies, the saving sacrament we have received, and even more may rejoice at its clear effects in us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sins of the devil. May God rebuke him with humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the wings of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us at this Mass. Pray that God may be with you and that God may watch over you, that God may take care of you, that you may feel the closeness of our Blessed Mother every day. As always, I'd like to end by reminding you, you remain the delight of God Almighty. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of St. John the Baptist, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. 
we go forth in peace the Lord and said the Lord thanks be to God Our closing hymn would be the summer. If you come and follow me, if I will call your name, will you go where you don't know and never be? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my love be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I bet call you? With your Lord, a truck to escape. Will you let me answer prayers in you and you in?